Hey there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome back to Long Crime Network Live Q&A. This is where we take your questions about some of the biggest stories that we've been covering. And today, once again, focusing on Tiger King. We've gotten a major response from all of you about this topic, and really particularly, what happened to Carol Baskin's former husband, Don Lewis? He's been missing since 1997, and we're breaking down all the theories out there. Now, again, we're going to be taking your questions. So whatever they are, submit them. We'll read them on the air. We'll break it down. But I'm not alone today. I'm here with my co-host, Linda Kenny Bodden. Linda, it's great to see you. And we have a special guest. Now, as opposed to me bringing on the guest, I'd like for you to bring on our guest. Who do we have with us? Jesse, I am so excited to be here. So excited to be talking Tiger King. And I have with me my husband. Actually, He's been with me for four weeks. We have been socially isolating, socially distancing. And I just want to ask you, honey, um, yeah. did I force you to watch Tiger King? And if I did, did you like it anyhow? You suggested it very strongly. <laughs> well, I'm glad he did. Jesse, <laughs> I'm going to put on my tiger mask, okay? It's a little social distance mask, a little tiger Well, I'm mask. glad. I'm, I'm glad you are. And I'm glad that you watched it. I'm glad that you forced uh, Dr. Biden to watch this because, Doctor, there are a lot of questions that we have about this. So I'm glad you're on. I want to start with the major theory here. And people believe, and it was we heard a lot about in Tiger King, that Carol Baskin murdered her husband, maybe did it on the property, maybe fed his body to tigers. So let's start with that. If, in fact, he was killed on the property and his body was somehow disposed of on the property, maybe fed to tigers, A, how realistic is that? And B, would there be anything left over today if we went back to the property? If the body, there was a body left in the open on the uh, uh, in the sanctuary, uh, the there would be destruction of soft tissue over time. Uh, it starts with maggots. The maggots uh, start eating up the soft tissue. Uh, let alone big animals. But very few animals, uh, hogs for one, will eat up the whole body. Uh, they'll eat the soft tissues. So bones would still be present wherever that body was. Teeth, teeth can last for thousands of years uh, uh, in water, for example, even in water. Uh, and clothing. Clothing can also, depending on the fabric, can also uh, be present for decades. So if, for example, the body were put into a cemetery pit that's on the property for um, animals and left where the animal remains are left, bones would be there 20 years later. So would teeth. And it would be very easy to distinguish human bones and teeth from all the different animals that are there. And certainly at belt buckles or- And doctor, I'm assuming that there would be technology today to test the DNA and ultimately say, wow, what these fragments, this remnants that are left over, they can conclusively determine that that belonged to Don Lewis? Yes, that is, DNA stays for hundreds of years in teeth and in the inside of the teeth uh, pulp cavity, uh, and in bone too. It would be possible 20 years later, definitely, to identify the DNA and the person from whom the bones came. Uh, and that could all be found if it were on that property. Uh, to dispose of a body right. uh, is very difficult without any remnants. So let me ask you this, uh, Linda, I want to jump to you. Uh, clearly, you know, a lot of people believe that Carol Baskin did this, but I want to flip the script. If there, what would you do if you were representing Carol Baskin at this point and she's not happy with Tiger King, how she was portrayed? She's apparently getting death threats. I mean, she is presumed innocent. She hasn't been charged. No one has been charged in connection with the disappearance of Don Lewis. If you were representing her, what would you advise her as to next steps? Do you think she has any legal action against Netflix, against the producers, against anybody? I mean, what would you rep what would you advise her at this point? 
Well, that's pretty hard at this point. I think the first thing I'd say is let's go get private investigators. Let's go down to Costa Rica. Let's look at the secretary of, they have a secretary of state of, uh, it's called a different title, uh, the records dealing with some of the companies that uh, your uh, prior husband had. Let's see if there was any movement in them, what happened to them, who took over. Those are the kind of things I would want to know. Also, I think a new scouring, now that this is in the news, of the people who were in the area of the airport 20 years later, because then they could be remembering some things. And the third thing I would do is privately I would give her a polygraph, Jesse. And if the results were good, I'd be blasting those all around. Okay, Linda, I'm glad you mentioned that, because a big question that's come up after the documentary, and I'll tell you what, one of the questions that we got from one of your friends, he's actually a retired officer, was asking about the polygraph. And do we know that if any of the other players involved took the polygraph test, uh, do we think that Carol Baskin did everything that she could have to help this investigation? And my question to you is, Linda, did she? Because my understanding is she refused to take a polygraph. Her attorney said that there would be no reason for her to take it because it's not going to stop the police from later investigating her. So what do you think about Carol Baskin's role in helping this investigation. Well, let me just say one thing, Jesse. I would, if I were her attorney then too, I would never let her take a police polygraph. I'd want her to take a private polygraph and say, here, and never let her take a police polygraph and say, hey, look, that would be unfair. But we don't know what she did, and that's part of the problem. She said she did everything she could, but did she uh, hire investigators to search the, all the premises? Did she leave the car alone? Did she suggest to them that they should do maybe DNA on the car? If there was a fingerprint in the car, and I believe there was one that found, did she give the background to who that person is? Who had the guns? Remember, he went about four months before and applied for a domestic violence restraining order saying that she had taken away his gun. Was that gun found? Where is it? Did she hand it over? Those are the kind of things that I would want to know right now. Uh, Dr. Bodden, let me ask you about the investigation. We've been talking about it a little bit. So we know that the van, uh, Don Lewis's van, was found at this private airport about 40 miles away from their animal sanctuary. The keys were on the floor bed, no sign of Don Lewis. They waited a few days after, the investigators waited a few days after the van was found to ultimately test it. They found a fingerprint that matched somebody who would have had access to the van and really said, eh, it didn't really lead anywhere, it was a dead end. But we know that uh, Don Lewis's daughter, at least, was critical of the police investigation, saying that they didn't test the meat grinders on the property for DNA, although we believe those uh, meat grinders weren't even there when Don Lewis disappeared. Based upon what you've seen, is there anything that troubles you about the investigation into the Don Lewis disappearance? Well, um, I'm not sure what was done and what wasn't done, but certainly the police at the time would have looked into how the van got to where it was found. It's a small airport. Are there attendants there at all times? Uh, was it, did anybody see the van come into the uh, property? Uh, and did anybody get out? Uh, did, uh, was there any evidence that he got into an airplane? Apparently not, but I don't know how their records are kept. Because one of the issues would be he got into an, uh, an aircraft, his own aircraft, and somehow crashed over the water or something. Uh, that should be easily checked out. But uh, the van itself would well, have to be well, taken. Well, Dr. Bodden, here, here's the thing. Yeah, because here's the thing with the van and, and also the investigation itself is that the sheriff came forward recently and said that he believes multiple people were involved in this. Now, that's different from a lot of the theories that people have out there that Carol Baskin did this on her own or presumably on her own, again, allegedly on her own. Do you think that the evidence supports or, in your experience, to make a body disappear or to get rid of somebody, that more people would have been involved in this or just one person? Yeah, I think it's, it's easy for one person to kill somebody. It's hard for one person to get rid of a body by himself or herself because the body has to be put in a vehicle. The vehicle has to go someplace. The body has to be dragged out and carried, depending whatever is going to be done with it. Uh, but usually, I've been involved with a number of these cold cases that come up years later uh, when bodies are found in garbage dumps or abandoned buildings, uh, homicides. And uh, it's amazing how much information can be gotten years later in interviewing pertinent people. 
and even people have been interviewed earlier and now are more willing to talk about it. But uh, the, the van itself may hold a lot of information. And I think that I agree with the sheriff that more than one person is most likely to be involved w in getting rid of the body. Sure and uh, that uh, person may still be alive and willing to talk now uh, who, who was in hiding 20 years ago. All right, I want to get into that in a second. But again, if you're just joining us, welcome to Long Crime Network Live Q&A. We're taking your questions right now about the Tiger King case and more specifically about the disappearance of Don Lewis. There are a number of theories out there about what might have happened to him. And as Dr. Bodden just said, we were listening to this idea about, well, is there the Costa Rica angle? And were more people involved in this, that Don Lewis was allegedly involved in illegal dealings with people in Costa Rica? Now, Linda, let me ask you this. The sheriff, aside from saying that he believes multiple people were involved, he said he'd be willing to offer some sort of deal to somebody that might have even been involved in this disappearance if they have information. What is he talking about exactly, Linda? What kind of deal, realistically, could someone be offered if they were involved or knew about and hid information about killing and disposing of the body of Don Lewis? Well, here's, here's the thing, Jesse. First of all, the sheriff has no, he's talking about immunity, which means I'm not going to prosecute you for what you tell me, usually. Um, and, and we've seen that in cases I've been involved with in Aaron Hernandez. There were a lot of immunity deals at the bench. But the sheriff doesn't do that. That's done by the court at the request of the prosecutor. So I think what he's trying to do is get people to come forward. Maybe he thinks there's, there's three people involved and somebody will say, well, if he's going to give immunity, I'm going to be the first one in. I'm going to go tell everything I know because I will at least get a good deal and I'm going to get a lawyer to go do that and make, make that first inquiry. That's what he's trying to do. So that if, if he thinks there's three people involved, that he gets somebody to come forward first to get the good deal and then dime out, as we call it, uh, the other people. But Linda, how realistic would it be that somebody would come out all the years, years later with information? Only if they think that their co-person that committed a crime, if there was a crime here, is going to go running to the sheriff first. So that maybe there's thing we don't know about, pressure being put on that we don't know about. That's what usually happens, that, hey, um, you know, there's some pressure being put on somebody, and I saw the police going into his, his or her office, and I think he's going to talk. I better go there first. That's really what happens. I mean, who's going to tell them who bought the sardine Dr. oil? Dr. Bodden, I want to throw to a... Uh, what, well, well, that's where I want to get to next. You want to talk about the sardine oil, Linda? Let's get into the sardine oil. So, Dr. Bodden, the question, of course, is how could someone have actually fed a body to tiger? Now, Harold Baskin made what is clearly a offhand comment about pouring somebody in sardine oil, and that might be how tigers would be attracted to the body and eat it all up. There's also this theory that you could put a body through a meat grinder. Now, in the documentary, they show these very large meat grinders, but according to Carol Baskin and other evidence presented, there were only these small meat grinders possibly on the property. And then I just see a question we literally got in that says, is there any evidence of the wood chipper scenario uh, that Tiger King threw out? So this idea of grinding a body up or dousing a body in sardine oil to attract tigers to eat the rest of it, I mean, I can't believe what I'm saying right now, but I am saying it. How realistic is that, Dr. Bodden, and how would that unfold? Well, uh, talking about wood chippers, have been involved a couple of wood chipper cases in which the whole body is put into the wood chipper and little fragments come out. But those fragments can be sufficient to identify the body uh, years late, decades later, if uh, a, a tooth or a, a piece of bone uh, in the wood chipper or in the ground near where the wood chipper was can be there 20 years later and would still give the DNA, as you point out, and uh, uh, identification of who the decedent was. But I think that big animals tend to eat, and most animals will eat the soft tissues of a dead uh, body, of a dead human, uh, for example. But bones and, and especially teeth are very uh, hardy. They stick around for decades and decades, and clothing does. We've had uh, people identified by an earring or by uh, uh, a, a breast implant uh, uh, decades later, uh, which can be numbered, in the, for example. So that uh, uh, 
animals, very few animals will be able to destroy everything. Hogs have, hog farmers can get rid of bodies uh, total from leather to, uh, to hair, but other animals uh, leave tissues behind, mostly bones, teeth, clothing, which will stick around for decades if the spot is found where the body might be. So Dr. Bodden, we're getting another question kind of about this. The question is, Dr. Bodden, how realistic is it that someone could commit the perfect murder here? There was no physical evidence. Investigators looked at the sanctuary property. They found nothing. People who think Carol Baskin did this, she's not a career criminal. How could she have created or committed the perfect murder here if, in fact, she did do this? Again, no charges have been brought. There's been no, no physical evidence to even demonstrate a killing took place and nothing linking her to the disappearance of Don Lewis. But again, this seems like the perfect crime. How could someone have really committed this? Well, contrary to public opinion, perfect crimes are quite numerous. Remember, 40% of murders don't get solved, period. 40% in, th in this country. And there are some communities and states where uh, more than half the murders don't get solved ever. Those can all be considered perfect murders. Uh, so in this instance, what was the issue that has come up is if uh, the, her husband was dead, the issue is how was the body disposed of if he's dead? And uh, one of the things that have come up is leave it on a, with a lot of animals around. Another thing would be, uh, dumping the body in, in a big body of water. Like an ocean, the bodies can be destroyed and never be found. If there were a lake, a deep lake around, bodies can go into deep lakes, non-running water, and stay there for decades intact, encased in wax. We've had bodies come up 20 years later who are the body fat becomes waxed, and you can identify the body even just visually uh, years later. So th those are the two main ways that body can be get rid of in, in uh, water or in disposal on land or in fires. But fires don't destroy bodies completely either. Even the fires, even a crematorium, they're fragments of the body, of the body, especially the teeth that still uh, remain after the fire. Wow. I mean, these are things that I never even thought I would think of. But then again, I never thought I'd see a documentary where we're talking about someone feeding their husband or allegedly feeding their husband to tigers. Linda, we got a question for you. And I think we might know the answer to this. But let me ask you, has Howard Baskin, who's Carol Baskin's current husband, has he been interviewed and offered any insight into the disappearance of Don Lewis? From my perspective, Linda, he's just fully supported Carol and said that all of these rumors uh, that's exactly what it are, rumors and theories, and they're baseless. But his role in all of this is clearly something that people are speculating about. What are your thoughts, Linda? Yeah, you know, the first thing you would look at is, is in any situation, not just hers, was there a relationship beforehand, right? Um, appears that not. Appears that she met him a number of years after her first husband had disappeared. But her daughter is also very supportive. She actually runs the uh, sanctuary with her mother. So you have her whole family around her very supportive, but I'm sure no matter what, the police should, if they're going to have good procedure, should interview him now. And he doesn't really have any reason to take a Fifth Amendment. He should give an interview. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe that's what will happen as the story ultimately progresses, but clearly he has been on uh, Carol Baskin's side and understandably so. I'm going to guys, I'm going to ask you both the million dollar question here from one of our viewers. It literally just came in. And it's pretty straightforward. Dr. Bodden, I know we'll all be careful on how we answer this. The question is, so do you guys think she did it? Dr. Bodden, I'll ask you what you think about that question, if you think the evidence seems to support if Carol Baskin ultimately was involved in the disappearance of her husband. My expertise as a forensic patho pathologist and scientist is to determine what happened when it happened, how long ago it happened, but not who done it. Who done it is up to the police. We, I could, uh, I'd be very happy if I could identify some bones that said that uh, that is uh, uh, whom we're looking for.
but I would not dare to say who did it. So that's beyond my pay grade to say who done it. That's very job. good answer. I understand that. Appreciate it hundred percent that you answered it that way. And Linda, I'm going to ask you too. What do you think? You, you heard the question. Do you think that Carol Baskin did it? And I know it's a very open-ended question. It's not a fair question, but let me ask. I'm sorry, Jesse. I meant to, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was so concerned reeling from the body fat issue. So I was a little concerned with that question being posed to me after being in quarantine, so to speak, for all these weeks. But let's go back to the question issue with her. Do I think she did it? I don't know. Do the police think she did it? Eh, probably, unless the lawyer who says that uh, Don was dumped out of a plane over a body of water knows who, you know, who he was talking about at that time. But in this case, if the police think she did it, that's something, uh, you know, all spouses are a part of. And she's got to really go out there fighting and uh, or either or lay low. And I don't think laying low is going to do it. I think she's got to go out there fighting and uh, do all the things she needs to do to show people she's innocent, even though if she were in a courtroom, she'd have no burden of proof. Well, we have a follow up question about this, about Carol Baskin. The question is two part. A, why was Don declared dead? I believe it was in 2002. Uh, and the second question, Linda, is, are you concerned or did you think it was strange that the disappearance language was put in the will? Uh, the answer to the first one, he was declared dead five years and one day, which is the law. Some places it's seven years, the law uh, where he was. Uh, you have to show that there was no activity in his bank account, his credit cards. He didn't go to church. He didn't contact his family. He didn't make any phone calls. So that was pretty easy because nothing like that ha happened. And if it did happen, it was concealed over in Costa Rica or someplace else that we know nothing about. And on the disappearance language, she said that she used it because that he was going to uh, Costa Rica and there were a lot, lot of gangs and a lot of kidnappings. I do think that that is a realistic, right. um, something that you can put in a, uh, a power of attorney, especially if you're going to a foreign country, because we do know there are kidnappings Right. right. And, and given the circumstances by which Don Lewis spoke to her about this, I get why that language might have been put in, but clearly people think it's uh, very suspicious. Uh, Linda Kenny Bodden, Dr. Michael Bodden, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you all for joining us. Please stay safe. We'll be back next week.